The people of nowadays, the young men and women, they have a way in which they express love to one another. I've heard them say, my brother for me, my sister for me, my cousin for me. I see a sense of ownership in that, in the way that they express it. And I have decided to entitle my sharing, my shepherd for me. Shall we pray? Our gracious Lord and Father in heaven, Lord, we come before thy throne of grace, realizing we cannot go to any other apart from you, dear Jesus. Hear us and speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A story is told. A preacher somewhere in Russia had gone to do his ministry and share the word of God. He came across a young shepherd boy who could not speak English but would understand a few things here and there, but would not be able to speak. This preacher man sat with this young man, this little young shepherd boy, helped him to understand the work that he was doing and how that work would relate to Christ. The preacher took the boy, the shepherd boy, into the psalm of David, Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6. He tried to explain to the shepherd boy 
in some cases trying to put in gestures or rather signs so that the old sh the, the shepherd boy could understand the psalm of David. In trying to help this boy memorize the psalm of David, the preacher told the young boy that you can use your five fingers to help you at least remember the first few words of the psalm. Because the little boy could not understand, could not speak English. The preacher took him through the first five words of the psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. And the little boy, the little shepherd boy, excited about the demonstration, went on, the Lord is my shepherd. He went on time and again, the Lord is my shepherd. Then the preacher man left to some place elsewhere. Went and did his work. When he returned on his way back to where he came from, decided to pass to pass by to see the old the, the, the little shepherd boy. When he met up with the mother, he was given the sad news that this shepherd boy had died. The preacher man felt very bad, very sad about it. But the mother told him that this boy, when he died, he died holding his fourth finger. Then the preacher man remembered what he had told the shepherd boy. He went to his fingers and started to memorize, to, to recite the psalm that he had given to the shepherd boy. He remembered the Lord is, and on the fourth finger was the word my. The preacher man, even though he was sad, he was encouraged. Because the shepherd boy had personalized the shepherd. He had personalized Christ when he said, the Lord is my shepherd. And I want to say to you this time around. That you need to personalize your relationship with God. You need to be like this shepherd boy. And say the Lord is my shepherd. The psalm is David. When you look at the all of the psalm in Psalm 23, you realize or you find that he had personalized God. You could see in every line of the word how he has made this relationship with God so personal. Psalms 23 verse 1 to 6. The psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd. Personalizing this relationship. In fact, like the young men and women of nowadays, he's saying, my shepherd for me. He continues, he says, he leads me besides the still water. That is very personal. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yet yeah, though I personally walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For I know 
that he is with me. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me in the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In every line, the psalmist is taking God very personal. The Lord is my shepherd. It's not only the psalmist who refers God as a shepherd. The prophet Isaiah has a very good way of referring to God as the, as, as, as the shepherd. He says in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 11, he says he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with the young. Indeed, my brother, my sister, Jesus has a tenderness of the shepherd. There is no lamb that is so tiny that he would not carry it. There is no saint who is so weak that he will not gently lead. There is no soul that is so faint that he will not give it any rest. Jesus himself says of himself and he says in John chapter 10 and verse 11, I am a good shepherd. A good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. What is Jesus saying here? He says to them that believe in him, he will not leave them, he will be with them. Even though they are in the valley of the shadow of death, he's not going to leave them. He's not going to abandon them. He's going to move all the way with them. He will not forsake them. During the crisis, during the difficult circumstances of life, during the dark hours of your life, he says, I am a good shepherd. And a good shepherd lays his life for the sheep. In other words, my brother, my sister, Christ is able to take that crisis that you are in. No wonder he says, Take my yoke upon me. For my burdens are light. You and I have got to believe this shepherd. You have to believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Even though you are in that crisis. The assurance that we get is that he is with us. He will not abandon us. He will not leave us all by ourselves. In those dark hours of your life, Jesus is saying, I want to be with you. I want to go all the way with you in this crisis. So that at the end of it all, you may look back and say, he has been with me from the crisis through to Christ. May God bless us. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, thank you, dear Heavenly Father. For the assurance that we get in your word. That in the midst of the crisis. In the midst of the difficult circumstances of life. You are a good shepherd. Who has given his life. For our salvation. We believe it. And accept it in Jesus name.